Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about, um, or actually solve the same problem that we started out with, um, and uh, you, uh, use three different um, smoothing methods for forecasting. Um, we have a time series where we have five time periods um, in the past, and our y, or our actual value in the time series are 450, 495, 518, 563, and 584. Um, let's use, uh, let's generate a series of forecasts. Uh, and this will be a two period simple moving average, not weighted, simple moving average. The process, uh, this is an industry sometimes called rolling average, and what you do is, uh, since the number of periods is two, you take, you take the t two oldest, from periods one and two, two oldest data values, you average them, and you record that answer as the forecast for the next period. So f 450 plus 495 divided by two gives us 472.5, and that will be the forecast for time period three, where the actual for time period three is 518. The forecast using a two-period moving average model is 472.5. Then you drop the oldest data value out, and you pick a new one. So now we're working with 495 and 518. Average those two and record it in the next period. And that would be 506.5. Again, drop the oldest one out, pick a new, 518 and 563 average gives us 540.5. Again, drop the oldest one out, pick a new, and now with these two, we have as forecast 573.5. So for time period six, if we, we don't know what the actual is, but if we were to use a two period moving average, this is the number that we would get. Now, uh, you can see that using um, this uh, two-period moving average and actually any of these uh, smoothing methods, we can only pr uh, forecast one period into the future. So wherever our actual values end, we can only go one period into the future. If I were to drop the oldest one out, now I need two values to make a prediction for period seven, and I don't have to. I have only 584. So we can only go one period into the future once our actual time values end. Now you might ask yourself, why are we making forecasts of what we know has already happened in the past? The reason why we do that is so that we can make, um, uh, we can compute a measure of accuracy for how good this model is, this forecasting two period moving average forecasting mo method model is. So um, in order to do that, we need to know uh, what um, our error is for this model. Error always is, and I will write this over here, error always is actual minus um, forecast. Sometimes we want to compute absolute value of error, absolute value of error. So we will put absolute value sign, and then we'll put error in the middle between them. What absolute value is, for those of you, I'm sure you remember this from when you were a young student, but if you have a number line um, and we have positive 2 and we have negative 2, the absolute value of positive 2 tells us how many units on the number line is that number away from 0. And the absolute value of negative 2 tells us how many units on the number line is that number from 0. So absolute value of positive 2 is 2 because it's only two units away, and absolute value of negative two is also two, because it is also only two units away. One, two, one, two. Sometimes we may want to uh, compute error squared. And the reason for that is because when we make forecasts, sometimes the forecasts that the model makes are lower than the actual, sometimes they're higher than the actual. So when we have positive and negative errors that have been made by your forecasting model, if you just add up those errors, they may 
be zero or some number very close to zero, and you might erroneously think that the model has been an excellent one, whereas it's not. So uh, in order to get rid of that uh, um, positive and negative um, error factor, uh, sometimes we compute absolute error, and sometimes we square the error value so that um, it will it, it'll always be a positive number. For example, 3 squared, of course, you know, is 3 times 3, which is 6, <laughs> which is 9, <laughs> which is 9. So um, coming back to here, um, we're going to show you what the error what the error is for uh, this forecasting model. So now we compute error. As I said, error is always actual minus the forecast. So uh, 518 minus 472.5 is 45.5. This one, the difference is 56.5. And this one is 43.5. Now if we add this up, uh, this is going to, this column is called bias. And bias is just your error terms all added up together. Now, as it happens, all of these error terms are positive, meaning that uh, our model underestimated the actual value every time. So that's why our, pos our error terms are all positive. Um, regardless, uh, let's go ahead and compute MAD. MAD. is mean absolute mean absolute deviation MAD mad mean absolute deviation and it essentially means average absolute error so we want to find what the absolute error is total absolute error is and then average it so um, to compute absolute error we need to compute the absolute value of this column. Now, as I said, all of these are, happen to be positive for this problem, so the absolute value of them are the numbers themselves. So 45.5, 56.5, and 43.5. Had this, had this, imagine this had been a negative number, then over here we would have 45.5, the positive value. Once you have the absolute error to compute MAD, uh, mean absolute deviation, uh, you would um, add up this column, uh, which the summation for this column is um, 145.5, and then divide by 1, 2, 3. You do not include these because we didn't do an error analysis for them. So 145.5 divided by 3, and we get 48.5. So MAD is 48.5. I'm going to erase this right here. MAD is 48.5. Uh, you could also compute mean squared error. Um, mean squared error, MSE. As the name applies or implies, uh, you need to square the error term. So here's our error term, and we need to square it. So um, error squared, uh, we get 45.5 squared, that gives us 2070.25, um, 3192.25, and 1892.25. Sum that up, uh, divide by 1, 2, 3, and we have mean squared error. So the summation here is um, 7154.75 and um, when you divide that by 3 you get 2384.92 and finally um, and that would be MSE mean squared error and finally we have uh, uh, what's, co what's called MAPE MAPE is mean absolute percent error, MAPE, mean absolute percent error. So we're computing a percentage of error, a percentage of absolute error, actually. And uh, for every 
for every data value that we have uh, a forecast for, and then we're averaging it. Now, to compute uh, percent error, or absolute percent error, absolute percent error, this is what you do. Uh, you take um, absolute error, and you divide it by the actual value. So uh, absolute error or wait a second here. Absolute percent error is absolute error divided by actual. So let me write that down here. Absolute percent error. So we take the um, percent error which is 40, uh, I'm sorry, we take the absolute error, which is 45.5, and we divide it by the actual, which is 518. And rounded, that would be 0 0.09. Take the absolute error, which is 56.5, divided by 563, which is the actual for that period. And rounded, you get 0 0.1. And do the same thing here, and you get 0 0.07. Then what do you do? Uh, since you want to average it, you need to add them up, and then divide by 3. So the summation again here is 0 0.26, which then when you divide by 3, you get MAPE. Um, these are all recorded above. Uh, MAPE would be 0 0.09. Now, um, MAPE is very good um, and very easily understood by many people because um, it's a percentage of error that's reported. And because it's a percentage reported, it's standardized, and so it's user-friendly in terms of understanding it, and particularly when it comes to com uh, comparing two different models. For example, if I had a two-period moving average here, uh, which is this right here, and then if I want to uh, develop a three-period moving average, um, and I will just quickly give you what those numbers would be. I will um, expand on this. This would be a three uh, period moving average forecast column. This, these are all forecasts. And these would be for time period one, two, three, four, five, where we have the same actual values. We still have these actual values going. Um, the forecasts would be um, at 450, 495, and 518, add them up, divide by 3, and what you would get um, is 487.67, uh, 487.67, but you would record that as the forecast for time period 4, and then drop the first one out and add up the, the remaining um, uh, three periods, so we would have one, two, th uh, we would have period two, three, and four uh, to add up. So that would be 495, 518, and 563. Add them up and divide by um, three, and you get um, 525.33. And again, drop the oldest one out, and now you have three, four, and five pe um, time period values. Add them up, divide by three and you get uh, 555. So the forecast for time period 6, uh, oh, yeah, the, the, remember these are forecasts. The, time peri uh, the forecast for time period 6 using a three period moving average would be 555. Uh, but now remember the actuals for this problem uh, are still are uh, 450, uh, 495, uh, 518, 563 and 584. We don't have an actual value, so we cannot do error analysis. But you could go through the same error analysis and compute MAD the same way, uh, compute the error, uh, absolute error, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you do that, you get uh, MAD to be for this model. MAD is um, 67. Um, MSE um, is um, 45, 58.4, and MAPE would be 12%. So uh, this way you can compare Model 2 and Model 1 with each other um, and see which one is a better model. Now, this is only two models comparing. We could um, go to a uh, weighted moving average, two-period moving average, weighted three-period 
three period weighted moving average. We could use a single exponential um, smoothing method with alpha of 0.1, with alpha of 0.2, with alpha of 0.3, and continue on. And so we could, uh, we have a, a whole host of uh, forecasting methods that we can pick and choose from and um, do a trial and error to see which one would be a better fit for our this present uh, for, um, time series that we're working with. And generally, you'd, you would end up doing that the first time around that you're ready to pick a forecasting method uh, for um, a time series that you've never forecasted before. So um, I'll leave you with those thoughts. And uh, the next session uh, will probably be on um, weighted moving averages. Thank you. <laughs>